Yeah, yeah. Let's just get it rolling. Cause it's too What's going on, guys? Welcome to the New Life Podcast. I am uh, one of your hosts, Tyler. And, and I'm Kenny. How's everyone doing? Kenny. Kenny's Meals. Kenny's Meals. And Tyler from where? From New Generation Wellness. Cool, cool. Some people call me Nova Lifts, but uh, don't call me that. That's what I call you. Yeah. Well, Kenny's last name is Meals. So. Meals, yeah. <laughs> Dylan. What's up, Dylan? How we doing? Uh, producer behind the scenes, Dylan Brash. Welcome. Uh, how you doing today, Dill? How's your day? How's your Wednesday? Living a life, baby. Yeah. Yep. Dylan pulling into here. I was across the intersection, and a buck ran in front of his car as he pulled into the driveway. Pretty wild. Like right out of the parking lot. Midday on a Wednesday, off the main road highway. That would have been a good way to start this podcast. <laughs> Slam a buck. Right Welcome to along. Jersey, huh? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, yeah, so this is technically episode number one of the New Life podcast. So I guess we should give some background on why we started it and what our main topics are going to be. Every time I tell someone that I started a podcast, they're like, what's it about? I'm like, uh, <laughs> positivity. It's about positivity. It's about self-development, self-improvement. Um, everything's going to relate back to that and how to just live happy, live free, live with clarity. Um, care to touch on that a little bit more? Yeah, um, that, that pretty much summarizes everything. It's just about understanding the positive things we have in our life, which I think nowadays is something that people move away from. You know, they're just looking at the negative stuff. You know, we all struggle with certain things, but at the same time, we need to realize that we're very you know blessed we're very um what's the word um, grateful grateful and and we have a lot of opportunities that many people in other places and countries don't have so it's just about positivity it's about feeling good physically and mentally especially mentally and finding new ways to you know maybe develop new habits that are going to impact your mental health your physical health your productivity, your day by day, you know, because we try to have great days, but you know, there's many things you can do to ensure that you can get the, the, the best out of your day. And living in the present, you know, a lot of us, including myself, always striving for, for more, for more success, more money, more material things, just more, like trying to become the best version of yourself you're always chasing something but we're never living where we are now in the present with what we have and like you said we have so many things we have so many things to be grateful for and being able to understand that we need to live in the moment is huge for mental health now that you said that chasing things i always forget his name it's the guy that did the movie interstellar what's his name anybody know leonardo dicaprio or? no interstellar um oh uh, Matthew, he said Matthew McConaughey, is that him? So he said that he's always chasing him in 10 years, you know? Mm. So you kind of like visualize where you want to be in 10 years, and then that's the, perfect, that's the person you're chasing versus, you know, looking at someone famous or somebody that's very successful. I mean, you should, you should look at people that are successful and, and pinpoint certain things that you think uh, help them get there but you should also try to visualize yourself in 10 years and make the right moves to get where you want to be you know I totally agree and you should be scared of the person you were a year ago yes. because you should be that much more ahead and like we said we, we always obviously want to excel and develop and become more but it's a balance of doing that striving to have more and do more and impact more people, but also being who you are now and enjoying it and living because, you know, we take time for granted and we could die tomorrow. We could die in an hour. Exactly. You never know. So it's like, yes, work to be a better person in 10 years. You know, 10 years is a long time to so work to be a really, really much more excelled version of yourself in 10 years, but also enjoy that journey. Yeah. 
and 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 also um you know visualize yourself in 10 years but also maybe have goals every six months or every three months you know or even every month you know like me personally <clears throat> when i want to achieve things uh rapidly you know i'll set myself a deadline of a month you know if it's something that takes time sometimes it's something you can do in a day you know so not just say okay you know what i want to be there in a year but there's steps that you have to do day by day to get there in a year you know you can't just say oh you know what i'm going to chill the first six months and then work hard the you know the other mm -hmm. six months you know you should do a little something every day to make sure that you get there yeah and that's one of my favorite uh i guess phrases recently is brick by brick you know yeah. it's the small improvements that add up and compound to whatever your goals are and it takes the smallest amount of improvement each day like one percent just yeah. a little bit oh yeah i like when you post one percent i mean something i've always wondered is you look at the highway system right and you're like how the hell did they build this you I know what i mean yeah that's what how that's as far as i get when but, i look at that but that is like that's very very brick by brick you know because yeah. it's like a little piece of road a little piece of road and now we have a highway system and if if they told me, if there were in highways and they told me, let's build a highway, I'm like, what? Like, that's impossible. Can't even comprehend. How can we do that, you know? But it's always just going down to the very, very first step. Exactly, yeah. And yeah. you can break that down into any goal you have uh, in any field. And that reminds me, I just started doing that with my clients, and it's something new I've you know, implemented into my business is a goal sheet for each client. And obviously, we have their main goals, their long-term goals, the reason they hired me. And then... I have subcategories of shorter term goals and then even shorter term goals. And then I even have goals that I don't always share with them, but they're goals that I set for them for myself. Okay. Um, certain examples could be just grip strength, longevity. Um, I want them to learn a specific exercise they don't even know about yet. Um, so or, I, or maybe improve one that they do too. Exactly. But you know, everyone comes in, let's use fitness for example, because that's what we're talking about. And they, they have a goal of losing a bunch of weight. Like, that's just very common. Yeah. Uh, but it's the step-by-step -step things. If you just constantly worried about that end goal, I need to lose 30 pounds, you're never really going to get there. You need to break it down into, oh, I need to meal prep today for this week. Even that's a pretty yeah. big. That's 10%, not 1%. But you get what I mean. Don't focus on that end goal. Focus on the very, very small steps that change your lifestyle to get there. Yeah, and especially I think that when, all right, so let's say your goal is to be physically healthier, right? And you're saying, okay, for me to achieve that, I need to drop 20 pounds, right? If you're not dropping the weight, you're not gonna be motivated because you're like, oh, you know, this is what I have to do to reach that goal. But if you say, all right, I need to drop 20 pounds, I need to start meal prepping, I need to sleep better, I need to do this. If one day you miss one of those, you can say, all right, I, maybe I didn't sleep well, but I worked out, I ate well, and I did this other productive factor, you know, that it's, it's going to help me reach my overall goal, you know? So mm -hmm. I think, I think when, you, when we set a goal, we should really <clears throat> sit down and analyze what are the steps that we need to get there just so we can, you know, keep track of each, each thing that we have to do to reach that goal. Yeah. And on that topic, I just want to give a tip. If your goal is to be healthier or to up your exercise, lose weight, whatever way you want to put it, focus on doing something each day. Bare minimum, walk your dog. Like something. Yeah. Get outside, go for a walk, maybe just lay on the floor and stretch for 10 minutes. It's just something. If you can check off the box that you did something every day, then you're on your way there. Yeah, it's it's much better than not doing anything. And and if you miss one of those, make sure you at least do some of the other ones. So let's say if, you know, you're very tired and you can't work out today, at least, you know, make sure you eat well or you at least go for a walk, like you said, you know. So that's uh, that's very important. Yeah, but going back to, uh, you know, to what we do. So what do you do, Tyler? Right. So I own New Generation Wellness and... I basically just do personal training full time right now. Um, I do do some online training as well, um, workout plans. Meal plans is something that 
I'm, I'm a picky on. I like to do nutrition counseling and help people learn about health and routine and nutrition. But strict meal plans isn't one of the things I do, I would say, because that's more for people who really need to be strict, like bodybuilders and yeah. such like that. Um, but other than that, I just train full time. And I, um, I'm also a yoga instructor, which is picking up a lot recently. And uh, I think yoga is a big direction of my life that's going to start to pick up even more moving forward. And where, are, where do you do your yoga now? Right now, I was doing my own class in this very room. But uh, during the summer, I paused that. So maybe in the winter, we'll pick that back up. Um, other than that, I'm just doing two classes a week, both on the same day, on Sundays, Sunday mornings. Great time to come flow, you know, decompress after the week. And I'm doing one at Peach House Fitness. Shout out to the crew, Dick. Shout out to the crew there and uh, Stephanie. Lovely gym, yeah. lovely facility. It's a women's only training facility, and sh her branding is just fantastic. And the gym is a great vibe and always good energy. All the girls are super energetic and happy every time I see them, and it's just a good vibe. So shout out to them, and also Amplified Fitness uh, over near TCNJ and Ewing. Yeah. Shout out to Jess and Pat. Just a great facility there as well. The vibe there is amazing. Love the lighting. Like it's just always fun to go in there. Yeah, it's a cool place. I have to make it down there on Sundays. Yeah, cool, I need cool. you and Sakib to come through. Yeah, yeah. I was actually with him today at Crave. Nice. Shout out to Crave Nature's Eatery. And the whole crew there as well yes. at Viva, which is, uh, I guess I should say what I do. Part-time I work for Viva Ballroom Dance and Fitness Studio, and I just do some group classes there and some yoga as well. So nice. um, shout out to them. And tell me a little bit about what you do. So I do Kenny's meals. And what we do is we offer uh, prepared meals that are ready to eat. And we take a cool approach, which is fresh meals that are made the day before you get them. They're priced very well. They're eight fifty a meal, $8 if you get 10 or more. Cheapest meal prep around? Yeah. Um, no subscriptions. <laughs> It's week by week ordering, you know, I'm not a fan of, you know, buying something and then getting charged again. You know, I don't like that. So it's week by week you go in and order and, you know, we have um, a menu that rotates every week. We, uh, people love the meals. We have 290 reviews, five stars on Google. And, you know, we're growing very fast and I'm happy about that. I'm very grateful. Mm -hmm. I'm going next week, uh, Tuesday through Thursday. And we're in October 12th is today, just, you know, so people know when yeah. we're saying this. Um, and I'm going to start doing wholesale to gyms over there. So I'm excited about that. Down in uh, Orlando, you said? Orlando, yeah, Orlando and Kissimmee. So I'm going to fly there once a week. I have two people that are going to help me cook over there. A lot of so. travel, huh? Yeah. It's, I mean, I fly right out of Trenton Airport, so it's, it's very it's affordable. And, yeah, that's what we do. So I feel... Um, how long ago did we meet? I just want to say, changing lives one meal at a time. Oh, had to I like get that, that out. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Uh, so how did we meet? You You were first a client of mine, I would say. We met you know, through social media, and we both went to the same gym around here. Shout out to PSA, Performance Strength Academy. Amazing gym. Best. And yeah, we met through there, and then you were interested in improving your mobility and yes. flexibility and doing some yoga. So we had a few sessions about that and connected right away. Got your hips opened up, oh, yeah. which was a great improvement very quickly, actually. And then we became good friends after that. And you're the one who came up to me and asked me to start a podcast, I believe. Yeah, yeah. You were like, just randomly, like, we should start a podcast. And I was like, you know, that's a great idea. It was always been in the back of my head. And I've been talking to my friend Mike about it, too, in the past, which he will definitely have a guest appearance many times, I assume. Cool. Uh, anyway, yeah, so you asked me to start a podcast because our conversations right, right off the bat were just very in-depth, fluent, and informational, I would say. And with purpose, you know, like I yeah. feel like every time we spoke before, after training or where, whenever we saw each other it was always about, you know, how are you feeling today? What's, uh, did you sleep enough? Like try I would like, always learn something every time we talk. Yeah, yeah, me too. And, uh, you know, you gave me some some tips. I gave you some tips. You know, we both started following other people, you know, 
like Andrew Huberman, Peter Atia, all these you know great people. Yeah, amazing. That provide free, amazing information, and um, yeah. So I think that's why I suggested it, and we were talking about it for a little bit, and we finally made the decision to you know let's get it done. Let's let's start this podcast to um, just bring some positivity out there, some tips for health, physical health, mental health, happiness, being grateful. You know all these different factors that. When you put them all together, they make you feel a lot better. Yeah, they change your life. And that's the whole point is a lot of these things we're talking about is how to live a certain lifestyle that makes you happier. Like fitness, for example. Fitness is not a chore. I say this all the time. It's a lifestyle. You have to change something in your routine, in your being that makes you want to move every day. Like it's in our DNA. We are made to move we are made to be challenged and excel so like it's just do it in whatever way you want you just have to find your own version of fitness and yeah yeah i mean even if it's even if it's working out even if it's playing a sport um for the majority of our existence you know we were out there hunting trying not to get eaten by an animal you know we were in sedentary how we are now where we're sitting on a computer, you know, on our phones, this and that. So, I mean, it's okay. Technology is very, um, it's it's very good for us. But we also have to rem- remember our roots, you know, and and make sure that we're moving, make sure that we're socializing. That's also a very important part of us, you know, not just socializing through social media, but having, you know, face to face interaction with other people, going out, getting sun, you know, sleeping well, getting all these different uh, factors on track, you know, just to achieve that overall health and and happiness and and feel good, you know. Agreed. Routine is huge. Circadian rhythm. You know, we are living on this earth. We must be connected to it somehow. And we are through its rotation around the sun and its rotation around its own axis. And we should, what's the word? I don't want to say obey it, but like we should recognize it and use it to our advantage. Yeah, I mean, we are who we are physically as a species because of this planet, you know? So however life started here, we've evolved, you know, each species, humans, you know, um, animals, dogs, whatever, you know? And that's something we talked about before, too, is technology, obviously, it was made to provide us a benefit. It was made to make our lives easier, better, however you want to put it. But all of it has had an unintentional negative outcome as well. Yes. Which is, it's fine, but you gotta just be understanding of that and balance your life around it. For example, your phone, it's great because you have unlimited access to anything you want right on your palm of your hand. But also now your eyes are down here and not up at the world. So just realize that, recognize it, and then, you know, move through life accordingly. Yeah, I mean, you said a key word, which is balance, you know? And I feel like all factors in your life need to be balanced, you know, all the way from social media, even exercise, you know, nutrition has to be balanced. You know, me personally, I I don't believe in, um, you know, carnivore, vegetarian, vegan, this and that. I feel like, you know, everyone's different. Some people do better with, you know, one style of eating versus another, but just kind of like playing around with food, see what works for you, you know. Staying away from processed foods, making sure that you're getting the best quality food that you can, you know, with what you can, because, you know, what you have available to you, what's available to you and all that. But, you know, just that, just with each factor, with exercise, what works for me, you know, maybe you can't go in the gym and do heavy weights, but maybe you can run a lot, you know, or do this or that. So, you know, again, back to that, the most minimum basic thing you could do is stretch for yeah. example you can lay on the floor and you can get in some type of position that stretches your body out that's going to be the most beneficial more than walking in my opinion for a lot of people obviously the combination of both would be great because you're walking yeah. you're getting blood flow you're getting sunlight but also being able to stretch and move your body through its full range of motion that's what's going to keep you feeling young feeling healthy and feeling not in pain i agree i agree and that's what people overlook a lot, right? People think, oh, I need to be more physically fit. They think I need to go to the gym for an hour straight. 
or they think they need to go for a run. No, you can just walk. You could also just lay on the floor and roll around. Like, you're going to get benefit from it. I use roll around as a just, it's kind of an inside joke to myself because I already explained, just laying on the floor and stretching a little bit can go a long way. So. Yeah, and, and I remember one time when I was training yoga with you, we did a certain lower back stretch and it was in the morning. And I think you said something regarding, you know, some hormone release or something like that when you stretch. Oh, yeah. That's uh, it's funny you brought that up. But, yeah, folding forward. You know, I obviously can't demonstrate for just listeners, but touching your toes, as a lot of people call it, which you don't need to be able to touch your toes. Just bend your knees like yeah. you're resting your stomach on your legs. And it's, let me think. Yes, so the your tailbone, somewhere around there, your sacrum, it's blocking off cortisol production. And in the morning, your cortisol is the highest. And cortisol is known as your stress hormone. Yeah which obviously has some good uh, components to it, but yeah. it's re responsible for stress. So you're shutting that release of that hormone off uh, by folding your body in a certain way. And then the movement that uh, goes to that secondary is when you look up at the sky and you reach up and you try to touch the ceiling and you bend your neck backwards like you're looking behind you, that releases serotonin. Yeah. So the combination of both those, and it's called a sun sal in yoga, and it's the main flow that everything's based off of, is you're shutting off cortisol and releasing serotonin multiple times in a flow, so you're guaranteed to feel, feel good after, at exactly. least better than you were when you started. Sometimes you can feel really, really euphoric after if you do it, you know, however long you need or whatever it is. Yeah, and it's probably good to do that in the morning. You, you showed me that one, and since you showed me it, I do it every time I go in the sauna, and yes. it is, like, unmatched. I come out of that sauna, and I feel like a completely new person. That's, That's awesome to hear. Love that. Yeah, and, and sauna, sauna is great for you, you know. It's just um, sauna, cold cold uh, ice bath, whatever they call yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It's just, you know, putting your body through this, like, you know, physical stress, which kind of, like, removes that... Um, I feel good all the time since, you know, like now we get into a car, we crank the AC or the heater, you know, we're always looking to be For super comfortable. comfortable, you know, and yeah, it's my favorite thing. The cold plunge recently has completely changed my mental state and I haven't been doing it every day in, you know, I excuses here, there, whatever, but I plan on when I move into my new house, I plan on having a cold plunge and, and really forcing myself to be really daily with it every morning. But the point is you're, Regardless of all the other benefits, the thing I find the most intriguing is that you're forcing yourself to be, I hate being cold, by the way. I'm one of those people who's always cold. So doing it is like, men, the mental toughness that it gives me is amazing. And to yeah. start my day like that, it lingers for the whole day. And it's like, I'm forcing myself to be as most uncomfortable as possible. And then you feel amazing after, for one. And there's all the other benefits we'll talk about, I'm sure, another day, late, maybe later, or another podcast. But just being able to be in an uncomfortable situation and being calm in that situation will give you so many benefits subconsciously in other areas of your life as well. Yeah, I mean, and, and especially if you're doing that in the morning, you know, where usually... You just want to cuddle up in that blanket. And, and I want to say the last two months I've been, I drastically changed my morning routine. So before I would wake up and the first thing I would do was grab my phone, you know, and maybe go on social media, check my messages, whatever. And now, you know, I try to certainly the first hour I wake up and I try to do two hours, um, you know, after I wake up. So to not touch my phone just because. Think about it, you know, you're waking up, you haven't done anything all day, and you're getting all this dopamine, you know, from watching a funny video on TikTok, and you're still in bed laying down, you know? So right there, you're messing up your, your motivation for the entire day because you feel good already and you haven't done anything. So, you know, I try to not touch my phone for one or two hours, and then I take a cold shower in the morning, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's, and now it's I can't, not comfortable. Well, it's funny because now I can't get the water cold enough because I'm getting used to it, yeah, you know. Right. You see it. And in it's the awesome. be, in the beginning, it was like I was shaking. And what I would do is I would start with like water that was a little warm in the beginning, and then when I was ready to get out, I would put it all the way cold and 
put a timer on for a minute. And then when I did that, um, it was it was rough, you know. But now it's cold the whole way, you know. So now I'm, I'm more used to being uncomfortable, you know. Totally. And like I said, it carries over into other areas of your life, whether you know it or not. And I just want to touch on this because it goes with a lot of what we're saying. And it's a type of yoga I've been learning about. I'm going to be certified in it in about a month. And it's called yin yoga. And I just posted this on my story. That's why I wanted to bring it up. For example, the, to relate it to the cold plunges, this type of yoga is your, your holding pose is longer. And it's about stillness. So you hold an uncomfortable position that's almost painful, right? You don't ever want it to be painful. But you're holding a stretch, let's just say. And it's uncomfortable. And you can hold these poses for up to 3 to 20 minutes. So imagine holding a stretch that's uncomfortable, almost painful, and you have to remain calm and still and relaxed. It's like such a mental challenge. And, yeah. and you know, the book goes to talk about, or this yoga goes to talk about that. Yin is the one side, right? Yang is the side we always do. Yang is working out. It's working out your muscle tissues. It's exercising. It's moving a lot, which is always it's what we need. It's yeah. fitness. But the yin, the yin side is the stillness part, the component, the mental strength component. And, you know, the joint benefit, not just your muscle tissue benefit, your tendons, your ligaments, your bones. So balance, that's where I wanted to get to is everything's about balance. And that's just a good example of yin and yang, movement and stillness, physical, mental. It's all a balance. And our lifestyle is what's going to help us achieve that. And then obviously you can break that down into so many different categories. For example, cold plunge, you're learning to be comfortable in an uncomfortable state. You're learning to be calm and slow your breath. Same thing goes with the yin yoga in a certain pose that's very hard, very uncomfortable, very tiring. You're learning to be calm. You're learning to slow your breath, slow your heart rate. And then let's say later in life, you know, nothing goes as planned always, right? Life is a minefield. You never know what's going to happen. So when things come into your life that weren't expected or not planned, you need to be able to respond accordingly, not react emotionally or irrationally. Yeah. It took me some time to realize that when you encounter difficult situations, you have to have a clear mind in order to, to fix them, you know, and, and find the the best solution and you know when it comes to putting yourself through these difficult situations like the cold water the sauna you know um a hard workout a hard workout you're you're building your tolerance you know to to any outside exposure of the world you know which i i think that maybe that's the reason why people are very sensitive to certain to any situation you know because we're, we're getting so used to always being comfortable, you know, like it's cold, you know, I have a jacket, I'm warm, this and that. Um, the moment you're hungry, you're eating, you know, that's another thing I've been doing, you know, let's say, let's say I have to eat at 12, right? I'll try to hold, you know, until 2 p.m., you know, and I get very hungry, but it's just, it's something hard that I'm doing, you know, and then when I eat that meal at 2, I mean, it's, it's amazing, you know, versus you just yeah. eating because you're, you're a much little more hungry. Grateful for it too. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, food's a huge topic. We got to have its own episode with yeah. nutrition. Obviously, we'll have a lot of these different topics we're talking about on their own episode um, because we need to dive into them. But for episode one, you know, I kind of want to round it out, keep it a little shorter, um, and just give people a taste, kind of what we want to be talking about where we're going to be moving forward and we're going to be talking about many different topics have many different guests on here and we're always just going to relate it back to overall positivity self-improvement and just how to become the best version of yourself right now right now every single day exactly. and every day that version should be better but just right now you just need to be the best version because that's all you got yeah yeah so you know, send us your topics. Let us know what you want us to talk about. If you have any questions, just send us a message individually to our Instagram. We're going to be opening an Instagram for the podcast soon. And then um, we're going to post all the links so you can 
watch and listen to the podcast. And, you know, like Tyler said, we're just introducing ourselves and, you know, talking a little about the different topics we're going to be touching. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's just about overall health, happiness, and being grateful and finding all the, the tools that apply to you that are going to help you reach those goals. Totally. And I know it's only episode one, but I just want to give a huge shout out to the people listening already. Um, you know, we're doing this for you guys and we want to bring the community together a little bit and just share our philosophies, our ideas, and just overall share that positivity because there's too much negativity in the world. So thank you for listening. Hope you share and uh, see you soon. Welcome to the New Life Podcast. Cause it's too cold. Oh, 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 o